you know, normally where we talk about historical levels and long-term charting and looking at like the S&P and the Dow, the NASDAQ, uh, what I'm about to show you here is going to blow your mind. This so was about 32 years worth of price action, right? I'd say that's a lot of time. And, you know, typically a long channel like this should have some strong levels afterwards, right? Because this FIB channel is meant to provide potential levels for the future. So once this dip point here is really created and we see a bounce, that's where we could begin to really show you what happened after this um, channel was made. So actually, I, I have this set here because I was making the thumbnail for the video here that you'll see on YouTube coming up. So give me a quick sec. I'm going to try and reset this right now. Let's see. Put the defaults here. And there we go. Fill the background. Extend this right. There we go. All right. So these are the actual FIB levels that like are standard that come with like any retracement set or channel set here. So after this dip point, basically what happened? That's what we're asking. So we know that the market moved up, but basically to show you that we'll call this line first resistance. Generally speaking, it was holding under it. It wasn't testing it exactly here at this point, but it led to a strong breakout. It led to a strong reaction where it broke over this, you know, bluish greenish line here where my cursor is. Back in 1986, I still wasn't born there yet, but uh, I have another five years until I was born then. But uh, you know, ran off resistance nicely. All right, so for Larry and Daryl and Chuck and Kathleen and Charlene and all of us here in chat, when a stock breaks resistance and runs off of it, resistance should initially become what? Support, right? So granted, did it shake under it for like a, a week or so? It did. Was it perfect? Not flawless. Did it get the job done shortly after though? You betcha. Moved up after. So this line flipped and there was a little slippage, but that's where we even look for that under and over move, right? You know, when we're looking for support to get tested, we're not just looking for, uh, you know, the, the test of that price and that's it. I mean, just like on NVIDIA, under and over, under and over. Same thing happened there on the, on the SPY or on the SPX rather, I should say, you know, just on the S&P. Now, this is where things get really crazy. This is where things get really crazy here. So obviously you have this, you know, peak. I don't know if this peak was really like in relation to this trend here, like so nicely. You know, I could draw a separate little trend line off of these like highs, right? That's different. That's completely different from what I'm about to show you. That's how strong this FIB channel is going to, going to be here. Look how strong this, you know, top line was. It broke above it for a moment, but afterwards... Look how clean this was. This was back in 89, 90, 91, up, up, up. Hey, there we go. I'm born. There we go. <laughs> the week of September 2nd right there. There we go. There's old Josh right there. But still, it took a while for this to eventually break this line. It was holding this line for a long period of time, right? And then finally, it smashed above it. Okay, well, you know, hey, guess what became support at first, you know, back in 2002 in the dot com crash initially, you know, eventually broke lower in 2008. But that top line eventually based out as support, little move up after. And then we saw 2008 happen. So basically to say, point being, this FIB channel has been playing out since, I mean, really 1974, but it was built from 1942. It's an 80 year trend line, 80 year channel, might, might I say. And that brings me to today. That brings me to the next, you know, level here. So we already saw this break over this, you know, next level here, the next FIB level. It's more of an extension now at this point within the channel. But you could say it was already false breaking it here and then rejected, right? It was a strong rejection afterwards. It crashed going into 2008. Well, afterwards, given, you know, the time in between this test and this test here, which is about, <laughs> about 20 years, I would expect resistance to hold. So it did. It did hold right there at this point. But look what's happening now. Obviously, we've moved back up heading into the end of last year, into this year. And, you know, it's crazy to see how strong this line is now holding, right? And then that even brings me to today. That brings me to this very morning coming off of Labor Day, going into the month of September, you know, brand new week. Uh, you know, let's even flip this into an intraday, right? I got the uh, ads there going. But you could see how strong this was at this point, right? What back in mid-July, I ran all the way up and then rejected it. I mean, not, not even a break, not even a break. It went right up, right up to it, sniffed it right back down. That was it. 
And then now here basically is what you're what you're seeing is a lower high being built. Become a Cyber Group member today. Just click the link below and receive all these amazing products and a world of knowledge for just $9. Do it today.